In the last video in this series, we tested how long some of the mowers I have could run on only 8 ounces of fuel. The results were pretty interesting as it turned out the worn out and abused Honda outlasted the other two mowers. I then started getting messages to do the same test with certain brands with certain engines. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Stick around to the end because you're not going to believe the results we got. In fact, I was more than surprised at how it turned out. So here are the mowers we're going to be testing today. First up will be this Craftsman with a Briggs 190cc flathead engine. The second mower will be this Murray with a 148cc flathead Tecumseh engine. After that we'll be testing this Cub Cadet mower with an overseas engine that says it's got a 159cc engine on it. And we're finally going to test a 141cc two-stroke from Lawn Boy. Now this is going to be a very involved video so I'm not going to waste your time and get right into testing. While the mowers are running I'll explain how I got to the situation and talk about the testing itself which I've gotten a lot of comments about. Now each of the mowers have been used for at least one year or more and a lot of them are well over 10 years old. They've all been serviced and all have an acceptable amount of oil in the engine. Now the air filters are not necessarily new but they are usable. Anything that is wet with fuel or oil will be replaced with an acceptable one and those that have debris in them will have been cleaned. The brake handles will be tied down so I don't have to stand with the mower the entire run. I will be within several feet of the mower just in case there's an issue. Unfortunately, I will have to intervene a few times which I will explain after each run. Now the fuel lines will be disconnected at either the fuel tank or an acceptable point because all the mowers vary slightly in their fuel line routing. Depending upon how the fuel line is removed, there might be a red mesh filter used as a splice. However, there is already a clear paper filter installed in the line from the test tank. Now the test tank already has marks on it. I'll be filling it up to the 8 ounce line. The fuel will leave through this fitting and through a shutoff valve and then through a couple of feet of fuel line. Like I said, there's already a clear paper filter in line and that's to keep debris out of the carb. Since this is a gravity feed system, I need to keep the line from sagging below the carb. So I'm going to try to route the line so it's always pointing down, but this doesn't always work. Next, I'll close the valve. That way I can fill the tank with the same amount of fuel for each of the mowers. Once it's close to the 8 ounce mark, I'll then use the bottle to carefully fill it the rest of the way. Now, once it's full, I'll then open the valve and a couple of ounces will leave the tank and fill the fuel lines in the carb. Now, once the fuel level has stopped dropping and I don't see any fuel leaking from the carb, I'll then start the mower and also the timer. A very long time ago when gasoline was dirt cheap, the fuel economy on your truck or car wasn't even an issue. However, once prices started to move up, things changed and not for the better. Now, Most people only care about the economy of their vehicles because of the large amount of fuel they need to fill their tank. Lawnmowers don't have big tanks unless you're a commercial lawn care service, but for the average homeowner, it's not even a concern. Unfortunately, things have gotten a lot worse in the last couple of years and I will not be mentioning what those issues are, but most of us are at least aware of that the cost of stuff has risen incredibly high. Even lawn equipment has gotten to be very expensive that some people who never thought about fixing their own equipment are not trying to get their hands dirty just to save money. Now you may feel like the 5 gallons of gasoline you get at the beginning of each mowing season isn't all that expensive even with the high price of gasoline, but you need to remember that as long as you live in a city or a suburb, you're going to have to buy 5 gallons every year or until you move somewhere where you don't have to mow anymore. Now, if your mower is really bad on gasoline, you might be spending more money than you need to. However, if you decided to sell that mower and buy a used, more fuel efficient one, the least you'll do is spend less money on fuel each and every time you mow. Now the time to beat was 18 minutes and that was set by the Honda and we passed that time a while ago so now we'll see what the new time is that the other mowers will need to beat. So it looks like the old Honda has been dethroned by the much newer, albeit an older design, Briggs Flathead. And with a time of 21 minutes and 23 seconds, I don't know how any of the other mowers we're going to be testing is going to be able to beat that. I know we've only tested several mowers so far, but I have to admit, that's just an incredible time to beat. 
Now there's still about one and three quarters ounces of fuel left in the tank, but that's because the fitting is not flush with the bottom of the tank. It's okay just as long as this happens with all the tests, which it has. Near the end of the video, you saw me holding up the fuel line. That's because part of the line sagged enough to form a low spot, so I had to make sure that fuel in that spot made its way to the carb. It also happened to the first mower I filmed, and we had to restart it after I realized there was still fuel in the line. After the testing was done, I did take the opportunity to drain the hot oil out of the engine and also sharpen the blade to get it ready for the mowing season. But to keep the video from being too long, I'm not going to show you too much of that footage, so we're going to move right along to the next mower and see if it can beat the time that was set by the Briggs. Next up is a Murray mower, and it's representing the dreaded Tecumseh brand, and since it has a smaller engine at only 148 cc's, it's got a pretty good chance against the much larger and more powerful 190 cc Briggs flathead. In the last video on this mower, we replaced the carb and the air filter, so it should be running at its best. Now I did get this from my storage, and that means there's not going to be a lot of oil in it, so the first thing we got to do is put oil in the crankcase, otherwise this won't be a fuel economy test, but something much worse. Remember not to overfill the engine oil, because this this will also hurt it, so keep the oil in the indicated area on the oil dipstick. Then we'll do like we did in the last video, we'll remove the fuel line from the tank and then use the red filter as a splice. Now this mower did not have any fuel in it, and that's because when I store the mowers I drain their fuel systems and let the mower run until it stops. After the line is connected to the existing fuel line, I'll then fill the tank with 8 ounces of fuel. Next, I'll use the wire that was already on the handlebar to keep it closed, then open the fuel valve and watch for any leaks. After that, I'll then start the engine, and the timer will start when the engine starts running. One of the more popular comments I've gotten while doing this test is that I need to put a load on the engine while it's running, and I can't agree more with them, but when I ask people how am I supposed to put a constant repeatable load on the engine, they don't ever have a really good response, if any. So I had to do some brainstorming, and the only easy way that I can put a constant and repeatable load on the engine would be to have several streams of water spraying under the mowing deck. The blades would then hit the stream, and this would apply a constant load to the engine. Now, I've had good and constructive comments about testing the self propel system as well. Now, this would be more of a real-world situation, and I couldn't agree more with them. This time, I was given a great idea, and that was to tether the mower to a stake and let it run in a circle, using the self propel to move it along. The idea is worth trying. I'm just trying to figure out a way to attach the tether to the mower, and also a safety switch to stop the mower if it should come loose from the tether. I'm not 20 years old anymore, so I don't want to be chasing this thing down. As you can see, I'm having to empty the fuel line of gasoline again because I had a low spot form below the carb. I might consider making the fuel line a little shorter, but I really don't want to modify the test rig too much or someone's going to call me out for it. So it looks like the 148cc Tecumseh did better than most of the other mowers, including my old trusty Honda. The only problem is that with a time of 18 minutes and 22 seconds, it's not enough to beat the Briggs flathead, so it's still going to be king of the hill. I will say this, it did an amazing job, and I wouldn't mind using this mower for my own yard, but I need to put a mulching blade and a block off plate for the side chute. Now I don't have too much time to relish on how well the hated Tecumseh did, because we need to move on to our next mower. The next mower to go up against the Briggs flathead is this newer Cub Cadet, and it comes with an overseas engine. Now, we've already tested an overseas engine, but this one is from a different manufacturer, and it's also smaller than the other one at only 159 cc's, so it should perform better. But is it enough to beat the Briggs? Just like everything else that comes from overseas, I take the information with a grain of salt, so I don't have high hopes for this one either. Now this one should not have any oil in it either, so after putting some into the crankcase and of course checking it a few times, we'll go through the same procedure as before. I'm not going to show you all the steps because at this point you should know the drill. I will say this, I have personally used this mower for over a year on my own lawn and has performed really well, so to be honest I wouldn't have any problems using this mower today or even recommending it to some of my friends. Okay. 
I was also given the suggestion to test the mowers with and without using the self-propel to see just how much of a difference there actually is, which is a great idea. Like I mentioned earlier, the tether is probably going to be the best choice for this sort of testing, but the only issue is that it also takes into account the weight of the mower and the terrain it's driving over. The other issue is that the self-propel was never meant to be used as a self-drive. It was always meant to assist the person mowing and not to do all the work. To be honest, if I was going to test how much less time the mower is going to run while using the self-propel, I would probably do it with the drive wheels off the ground. This would then isolate the drive line as it would be the only thing putting a load on the engine other than the blade, which we've already tested. I know it's not perfect, but I'm trying to do this testing the safest way possible and of course the easiest as well. The other great idea is to use a treadmill, but I do believe they were talking about a very specific type of treadmill that I don't have. The one I do have is powered, and I'd have to match the speed with the wheels, and when the mower stops, it could be pushed off the back of the treadmill, which is something I don't want to happen. Now, we're getting very close to the bottom of the fuel tank, and we're also passing the times for some of the better performing mowers. I don't know if it has enough left in the fuel lines to beat the Briggs, but we're going to find out here soon enough. I'm surprised at how well this mower performed. Apparently this smaller size really helped out with the run time because it was able to run for 20 minutes and 39 seconds on just 8 ounces of gasoline. And for being an overseas engine, I'm really impressed. I know some people don't like the fact that the Cub Cadet is even using these overseas engines, but after this round of testing, I don't mind as much as I used to. The last mower for this round of testing is something that's going to be pretty interesting to try out, and that's because it's going to be a Lawn Boy 2-stroke. I believe this is technically a 141cc engine, but since it's a 2-stroke, the conversion to a 4-cycle makes it slightly bigger, but I'm not going to bother with the conversion. At this point, I'm just going to skip to the testing because this routine is getting a little repetitive, and I do apologize for the soft camera image. I didn't touch the lens. In fact, during the middle of a shot, this filter turned on by itself, and I really couldn't tell on the screen. Now I do understand the reasoning for getting rid of the two-stroke lawnmower engine, but a lot of commercial users like them because they don't need to do any oil changes. As long as there's oil mixed in with gasoline, the engine is always lubricated with fresh oil. Now I try my best whenever I find a lawn boy or even a Suzuki engine to try and save them because I still find value in them. The other possible reason why they stopped making them could be due to cost. If you could buy a thousand four cycle engines for only $50 a piece to put on your mowers, but there was a two cycle engine available, but they wanted twice the price, you're going to go with the more profitable option. Now I haven't done any research yet, but if you know of a new two cycle mower that's still for sale right now, I'd like to know about it. I almost forgot one of the most common responses I've gotten from the first round of testing was that I should have adjusted the engine speeds to the same level, and I hate to say it, but when I was researching the topic, I was prepared to do just that. The only problem was that I would be changing the mowers from their factory settings, which in my mind wouldn't make it fair. I guess what I should have done was to at least make sure that each of the engines was running at their factory settings, but there's another issue even doing that. I don't think I can find the information on the overseas engines, which would then make it unfair. If I set the running speed for some of the mowers, I have to be able to do it to all of them. I don't know if you've been watching, but we have a new winner because we just passed the time that was set by the Briggs engine, and it's pretty amazing that we were able to beat it with an old two-cycle engine. I was standing next to the mower at the time, but in all fairness, I wasn't timing it, and I'm only relying on the video to gauge the times. So it looks like the two cycle easily beat the Briggs flathead by a huge margin. The time that was set by the lawn boy is an amazing 26 minutes and 51 seconds which in my mind makes me want to use this thing on my own lawn because it could potentially save me a lot of money in the long run. But there's a bit of an issue here. I brought up this issue with the topic of matching engine speeds to make it fair but what about the engines that have variable speeds because they have a throttle lever. Maybe it's not spinning at the same speed as the others, in fact it's running slower than it's supposed to and that's the reason why it was able to run as long as it did. In a sense, it's actually cheating. If you needed to save money on gasoline, would you ever lower your engine speed from where it is now? I know it sounds absurd, but there are those out there who'd probably do it. 
As for the testing, I would probably stay away from the less fuel efficient ones and stick with the Honda or Briggs flathead. Unfortunately, because of the design of the Briggs PulsaJet carbs on their classic mowers, I won't be able to test them, at least not without a lot of modifications. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.